Hey everybody, I wanted to show you today how insanely easy and powerful it is to use Microsoft Flow to create a web service. And then you can call this web service to do all kinds of crazy things in your client-side code. Um, basically any platform you're deploying client-side code to. Um, I I didn't see a blog about this out there. Um, I saw some blogs that got me most of the way there, but nothing that, t that took me all the way through. But I do want to give some shout outs to John Liu and Julie Turner, whose blog post got me uh, most of the way there. And I will post links to their blogs in the, uh, in the blog post that corresponds to this video. So uh, let's just dive in and get started with this. It should be a pretty short video. So here I am. I'm in a Microsoft Flow, and I am going to create a new flow. So let's do create new from blank. And what we want to do is we want to create a flow that can receive an HTTP request. So I'm going to search for a trigger for request, and here it is. Here's the trigger for a request. And uh, basically it's saying you're going to do something when a request is received. So we'll now be able to start a, start a flow and trigger it using uh, an HTTP request that we can use with you know, client side code to do a, an AJAX call or whatever kind of REST call we want to do. So let's select that request. Uh, I'm going to show the advanced options and I'm going to tell it that I want to do a GET. And now um, I'm going to add another step. And this step is going to be what data do I want to get and then return from this uh, web service. So let's keep it simple. Uh, let's connect to a SharePoint site and let's get some lists, some list information. So if I jump over to my SharePoint site over here, I have a list called locations. And this is my SharePoint online site. It's a list of locations uh, with the name of a company and then the street address for that company. So what I want to do is I want to create a web service that will return this list information. So jumping back into my flow, uh, I'm going to do a, a SharePoint action where I get list items. Um, maybe I should search for get list items. Get list items. There, are, get items. Okay, and now I need to give it a site address. Let's just choose an address that where that list is. It's called my demo site, and then let's choose that list from this name. It's going to be locations. Okay, so I'm now going to be getting the items from the SharePoint list called locations, and let's add one more step. And now our web service needs to actually send a response. So let's do a search for a response. If I could spell response correctly, that would help. So here's our response action. In this response action, it's saying, what do you want to send for the status code? We want to send a status code of 200. Uh, what do we want to pass in for the headers? Well, let's pass in the headers that we received from the HTTP request. And then for the body of the response, it is going to be the list of items that we received from our get items call. And now I'm going to save it. And that's all there is to it. I now have a web service that, when, is, when it's executed, will return the items from that list. And when we look at our HTTP request trigger, um, we now have a URL here that we can copy and we can paste into our browser and it's going to return that information. So here's the items from that list just by using that URL. So it's very important to note here, extremely important to note, that this URL can be used by anybody that knows the URL. There is no security behind this content now, so anybody can get to it. So I would never, ever, ever use this as a way of surfacing secure data, because anybody that can find the URL, they're not going to guess the URL because you've got these uh, goods and IDs up there. If you look at this, no one's ever going to guess it. Um, but if someone were to be in your environment on your intranet and they were to look at using Fiddler and see the code coming back and forth, they could theoretically capture that URL and then they could take it outside of the organization and use it. So uh, don't put secure data, don't expose secure data with this uh, method, please. Okay, now that I've seed my A, um, let's go ahead and use this now to create uh, in, our, in our website. So here I have a script. And in my script, 
I'm going to be using a library that I really like called data tables and I did do a blog post on data tables that I will send a link to as well because that's how I'm going to display this data from this call so uh, in this code I'm referencing jQuery and the data tables libraries I've got an HTML table and then I'm making a rest query to a URL and this needs to be the URL to my flow so let's go back to our flow let's copy that URL let's paste it here in our code so we're going to call that URL we're going to do a get on it and then when the call comes back we are going to execute the data table method which will take the results that are in data.value and it will turn it into a list view and that list view is going to display the company field and the work address field for my list so that's all there is to this so all this is very simple so it's one script making a rest call and then passing the results from that rest call to the data tables library and it's a flow with three steps well a trigger in two steps actually so let's save this script let's come over to our SharePoint site let's go into our site actions and let's upload that script so we're going to site contents and I'm just doing this the easy way with a site actions and uploading to a content editor web part um, because it's really easy to demo this way you could you could take the same code and put it into your SharePoint framework solutions which is probably what you should be doing and not doing it this old archaic content editor web part way but it's still a great way to demo these things uh, and if you're in classic it's a really simple thing to do so let's upload that file I called it flow.js and now I can go into my site contents let's go into my site pages and let's add a web part page and we'll call this web part page flow so to this web part page I'm going to add a web part it is going to be a media and content content editor web part and now I'm going to edit this web part let's give it a path to our file which was site assets slash flow.js and let's apply that and you see that we get a list view so this this list view that we're seeing here that uses data tables is reading data from this locations list using a flow uh, as a web service uh, what this means is that we can take this same script and I can take it to my WordPress site. So look, if I go over to my WordPress site at markradley.net, it is that same exact list view in a WordPress site. So this anonymous WordPress site is displaying SharePoint content using the exact same script uh, that we had for the flow.js. So this would allow us to theoretically, if we did want to store a list of contact information in SharePoint and surface it on our anonymous facing website, we could very easily. Um, and to show that this is real live data, let's go ahead and change something in that list. So just so you know, I'm not making things up. Let me go to my locations list. Let me edit this entry for uh, paint group and we will change to the, the company name to paint group rocks and we'll save that and now if I come back to my WordPress site and reload the page you see it says paint group rocks so it's reading that data live from SharePoint and it was pretty fast to do too what's really cool about this if you want to really expand upon this and think what else could you do with this if you look at your flow and if you look at the advanced options for the get items one of the things you can do is you can limit the columns by a specific view so if you're in your internet and let's say you have a list and you did not want to give 
anybody access to that list because it had uh, like really secure information like social security numbers or salaries. You could create that list. You could store your social security numbers and your salary information in there. And then if you wanted to create a list view for people to see the information but not have access to anything secure, you could use this method. You could specify the list, which would be like P, uh, you know personnel list, and then create a view that only showed the fields that you wanted people to have access to. And then only that data comes across in the web service call. And even though nobody has access to that list, you can still create a list view for them of that data. That's very, very cool. And take this another deep, another step further. Whatever connector you have access to, CRM, Salesforce, Outlook, your calendars, you can now get access to that information and service it very easily uh, in any web application you have. This is really cool stuff. Um, and again, be very careful though because whatever URL you create, this URL right here, anybody in the world who has that URL can get to your data. So be very judicious with what data you're exposing. Um, but that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, play with it. I'll give you guys the uh, the code that I use for the data tables in the blog post. And um, yeah, have fun and thanks.